Imagine you put on your glasses or headset and you're instantly in your home space. We believe the metaverse will be the successor to the mobile internet. The future is going to be beyond anything we can imagine. You've probably heard about Facebook's efforts to focus on the metaverse. From now on, we're going to be metaverse first, not Facebook first. On October 28th, 2021, at Facebook's Connect event, Mark Zuckerberg announced that he was even changing Facebook's name to Meta. But what even is all of this, and why should you care? Well, it could have drastic effects on the state of technology, your workplace, and ultimately, your future. Now, let's take a step back and discuss what exactly the metaverse is. Zuck has described the metaverse as the next version of the internet. And while different people have different definitions of what the metaverse is, Zuck defines the metaverse as, and I quote, an embodied internet where you're in the experience, not just looking at it. And although he talks a lot about interoperability and has said that you would be able to move across different experiences on all kinds of different devices, he primarily talks about VR and AR experiences in this video. For our part, we're heavily investing in building a healthy VR and AR ecosystem. In fact, last year, Facebook Reality Labs, which is their virtual and augmented reality division, reported an operating loss of over $10 billion. So clearly Zuck is investing a lot of money into the metaverse. But what exactly are his plans for the metaverse? And how would Zuck's plans affect society? Now, as I'm sure you know, Facebook is about as trustworthy with data as the cookie monster is with the jar of cookies. And they aren't exactly known for their ethical business practices. A lot is still uncertain, and there's definitely cause for concern. So let's go on an adventure. Fasten your seatbelts, because we're about to dive into the metaverse. Mr. Tom, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but you're terminally online. What? I know it's hard to come to terms with. My medical recommendation is that you touch grass and spend some time away from your electronic devices. But Dr. Zeep, this is all I have. Without the internet, what is there to even do? I don't know, did you try googling it? I'm just playing. But maybe you can try out some new hobbies, like baking bread or reading the back of the cereal box. I've spent most of my life in front of a computer. Well, I better get going. I can't believe it, man. I went to the doctor, and he told me I was terminally online. I don't even know what grass is. And don't even get me started on sunlight. You've been here for four hours. Are you gonna order something, or are you just gonna give me your life story? Hey. Oh, hi, Mark. Wait, you know this guy? I want to talk about the metaverse. We believe the metaverse will be the successor to the mobile internet. And you're gonna be able to do almost anything you can imagine. Get together with friends and family, work, learn, play, shop, create, as well as entirely new categories that don't really fit how we think about computers or phones today. Hmm, can I wipe my ass in the metaverse? Yes, it's gonna be more natural and vivid. Wow. Wait a minute, if the internet just becomes real life, then I don't need to do anything to fix my problem. Take me there now, Zuck. Alright, perfect. Welcome to the Metaverse. Hey, and welcome to Connect. Today, we're gonna connect. We're gonna talk about the Metaverse. I wanna know why. We've gone from desktop to web to desktop, from text to photos to text to... But this isn't the end of the line. This is the end of the world. Since we're doing this remotely today, I figured let's make this special. We've put together something that I think is really, that I think is really gonna give you a feeling for what this feeling could feel like. We'll be able to feel, we'll be able to express. Screens just can't convey the full range of human express. <laughs> now, as I mentioned previously, different people have different definitions of what the metaverse is. In fact, some people would even point to Roblox and Fortnite as examples of metaverses. However, the metaverse Mark is talking about is something much more vast and interconnected that isn't confined to a single game. 
To be clear, there are many companies building and investing in the metaverse, and Zuck never claims to own it, and he doesn't own it. But I will be focusing specifically on the plans that Zuck and his company have for it. Anyway, the idea is that you can do all sorts of different things in the metaverse, including everything from gaming and entertainment to work and education, and even more. On the gaming side, Zuck mentions bringing simple games into our everyday lives through holograms. New York misses you. What's that? I said, let me put my game face on so I can beat you. Oh no. I can't believe he became a furry. Instead of a profile picture, you'll have your avatar, whether it's just a normal guy or this lion thing. Why is he making this face? What is he doing? To avoid confusion, I should mention that throughout this video, I'm going to say Facebook and Meta interchangeably. Meta's head of VR devices has said that your avatar will be able to make natural eye contact and reflect your facial expressions in real time. Zuck has stated that the goal is to have both realistic and stylized avatars. They also want you to buy digital clothes. Just imagine, digital hype beasts, where instead of buying ridiculously overpriced clothes in real life, now they'd be doing it in the metaverse. I also should mention that Facebook bought Oculus for $2 billion in 2014, so they would be directly involved with the gaming side of the metaverse. In fact, the video brings up that there's a bunch of games coming to the Oculus Quest 2, including GTA San Andreas, which means you would be able to play GTA in virtual reality. And then there's work. I know. Please, try to contain your excitement. In the video, we see people wearing AR glasses and interacting with visual interfaces. And the idea is that you'd be able to see your colleagues go to meetings and give presentations all within the metaverse. But one concern about VR being widely adopted is that a lot of people, supposedly one in three, are highly susceptible to motion sickness. Also, when some people use VR, they can begin to feel disconnected from their bodies and the world in a negative way that can linger for longer than they expected. These feelings can have real medical significance and are associated with derealization and depersonalization. If you already have problems with dissociation, this is worth looking into if you want to get into VR. Also, consider this. Even without VR, a concerning amount of people working from home are essentially being spied on by their employers through their webcams. Could you imagine how much more invasive things could get if you bring such high-level technology into the equation? It's a scary thought. Imagine your employer using VR technology to track your eye movements and facial expressions. I mean, Facebook already appears to be developing technology that does exactly that. A spokesperson for them has stated that their patents don't necessarily cover the technology used in their products and services, but it's still something to keep in mind. At the very least, there is potential for this technology to be used in a more invasive way than ever. After all, it's been said that, quote, Metaverse technologies like VR and AR are perhaps the most data-extractive digital sensors we're likely to invite into our homes in the next decade. The video also talks about how the metaverse can be good for education. Honestly, it does seem like there's a lot of potential for learning opportunities here. This could be a more fun and immersive way to learn about all sorts of different things in a way that is just more resonant than listening to boring lectures. But the technology for this already exists without Meta, and we know how little regard Zuck seems to have for our data. And since Meta is pouring billions every year into the metaverse, it would make sense for them to want something in return. When people talk about the metaverse, there's a lot of emphasis on immersive experiences. As Mark said, you would be in the experience and not just looking at it. And again, this has great potential. You would be able to visit all sorts of places and do all sorts of different things. And it could potentially help you feel less distant with your loved ones. I'm just imagining a guy asking someone out in the metaverse. Hey, you want to make this a virtual reality? You're the prettiest girl in the whole metaverse. So yeah. Facebook, or rather, Meta, really has big plans for the metaverse. And that brings us to a big part of the metaverse. The economy. Here comes the money! One of the allures of the metaverse is that it would supposedly have its own fully functioning economy. To some, this may sound promising. But we're still in the early stages of a full-scale metaverse, and metaverse enthusiasts are still a long way from convincing the average person why they should purchase digital land. Facebook in particular is working on something called Horizon Marketplace, where anyone could be a seller, and you would be able to sell and share 3D items and get paid. Furthermore, their head of metaverse products had this to say. 
For creators, our goal is to provide a way for as many creators as possible to build a business in the metaverse. There will be many different kinds of creators in the metaverse. Creators who make digital objects, creators who offer services and experiences, and those who build entire worlds like game creators do today. And if we're going to talk about the economy of the metaverse, I have to briefly address the elephants in the room. Crypto and NFTs. You've probably heard more than enough about them by now, so I'm going to assume a certain level of baseline knowledge. Zuck briefly acknowledges the crypto and NFT projects going on in the community. They also want to make it easier for people to sell NFTs, display them in their digital spaces, and resell them to other people securely. I'm not personally into crypto or NFTs, and while there's a lot of people who are, there's also a lot of pushback against them. I don't want to live in a digital world with digital assets. I want to use Windows 7 and pretend we're still playing Flash games. But here's where it gets kinda surreal. Facebook has been working on EMG input devices for AR glasses. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Look, I didn't know what that meant either, so let me explain. EMG is short for electromyography, which can be defined as a technique for evaluating and recording the electrical activity produced by skeletal muscles. So Facebook's system would use electromyography to convert nerve signals passing through the wrist into digital commands. So at first, that input is going to just be around enabling basic gestures, click, scroll, select. But as the technology evolves, EMG input could potentially unlock full speed typing and it could give you subtle, personalized controls that you can use in any situation. EMG input could one day allow you to send a message in AR with your hand resting comfortably at your side without ever having to look at a screen. Notice how the researcher used an overt and highly visible click gesture to send the first message. And we're now able to do the same thing with the smallest of movements of the hand. EMG enables this by picking up subtle neuromotor commands with remarkable precision. So basically what you're saying is that you're going to be able to send a text message just by thinking about moving your fingers. Basically, the goal is to let you interact with virtual reality by moving your fingers. So you'd essentially be giving Facebook access to your muscles, nerves, and electrical activity. They're already collecting quite a bit of information from you if you use their extended reality products, such as info about your physical features like an estimate of your hand size, info about your environment, physical movements and dimensions, and info about you from third-party developers. If you thought Facebook tracking your data was bad, then you probably wouldn't be very comfortable with this either. And in case you're wondering, hey, how can the metaverse be truly immersive if you can't actually touch or feel anything? Well, Facebook's Reality Labs team is working on the technology that would create a realistic sense of touch in the metaverse. More specifically, they've been working on haptic gloves for years, with the goal of simulating pressure, texture, and vibration so that you will be able to feel virtual objects with your hands. Here, you can see Zuck himself trying out haptic gloves. The gloves are part of a vision they have for what our digital worlds will look like 10 to 15 years into the future, so they're not exactly done. Zuck also had this to say. You'll be able to take your items and project them into the physical world as holograms in augmented reality too. Now, Zuck and his company definitely aren't the only ones with stakes in the metaverse, and we don't currently know how exactly all these companies' plans would intersect with each other. In fact, even Walmart wants to join the metaverse. You see the tomato sauce on your left? Go ahead and grab that and then place it in your cart. Please, Zuck. Please tell me I can go to Walmart in the metaverse. Oh, sweet. I always wanted to go shopping in the abyss. Need any accessories? No. Here are some options on Jet.com. Dude, nice. In order to unlock the potential of the metaverse, there needs to be Sonic. We're also building a Horizon Marketplace where creators can sell other people. I think this could be very positive for our society and economy. If you ask people today what they thought the metaverse was, a lot, a lot, a lot of people would probably say it was a spider. But the people who actually follow the space would say it's about epic gaming. And, and, and that, that's because gaming provides gaming. <laughs> I'm excited to announce Grand Theft Auto. It's pretty wild. That must be Angela, that was name. Our head of gaming. 
Hey, Angela. How was it? Hey, Mark. All right. So I want to talk about the metaverse. You've been doing that for the past three hours. Oh, shit, going, bros. Totti would roll a joint to pin air. Lol. Hey, you're not allowed to smoke here. Don't tell me what to do, boy. I am Elon Musk and he's more I want to talk about the metaverse. What do you think about the metaverse? What do you like to know, robot boy? Hey, we're working on AI that's probably better than almost anything that you can do. Your EA will get to soul killed, Zucker boy. Tenter will be no more to smoke. Hey, what happened to that kid in the green shirt? You know, this was okay at first, but I'm not really sure what the point is anymore. Buddy, like I've been saying, it's all about freedom. We can do whatever we want in here. But can't you do all this stuff in the real world? <laughs> you can tell I'm frowning because of the metaverse's hyper-accurate facial detection. I couldn't be a furry in real life, could I? I don't know, I thought this would be like a more realistic and immersive internet, but it just hurts my eyes. And I can't even move the pieces. Uh, what's going on? Oh no, it's an NFT. You've got mail. You you got mail. You you you, got you, you got got Get me out of this hellscape. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Are you tired of your dog shitting all over the place? Are you sick of having to actually take care of your pets and feed them? Well, stop feeding your pets and start feeding your meta pets. They will never truly die, just like your big tech overlords. Ha 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 lol lol lol. First, the feeling of feeling. You're going to really feel, you'll see their facial expressions, all the sus ways that we communicate, you'll get to decide when you want to be with other people. When you want to block someone from appearing in your space, or when you want to take a shit. You'll be able to take your shits and project them into the physical world as holograms and augmented reality too. Boz outlined our responsible innovation principles, and the first one was never privacy. And that point is, is so important. Now you might be wondering, where did the term metaverse even come from? Well, it actually comes from a 1992 science fiction novel called Snow Crash. It's worth mentioning that in this novel, people use the metaverse as a form of escapism from a dystopian reality. Hmm. Mark has stated that open standards, privacy, and safety need to be built into the metaverse from day one. But considering his company's history of privacy issues, it's easy to see why people don't take his word at face value. There's also the question of how exactly would the metaverse be moderated? In an internal memo seen by the Financial Times, Facebook CTO Andrew Bosworth said he wanted meta virtual worlds to have almost Disney levels of safety, and he acknowledged the threat that harassment or other toxic behavior could pose to the company's plans for the metaverse. But at the same time, he basically said that moderating what people say and do in the metaverse is practically impossible at a meaningful scale. That's not very reassuring. It's thought that the metaverse would amplify both the positive and negative parts of social media. For instance, while you may feel a deeper level of connection that you simply wouldn't feel through an Instagram post or a FaceTime call, you might also be at greater risk of harassment. Depending on how deeply ingrained the metaverse would be in society, and how advanced and immersive the technology will be in the future, there's a very real risk that it would be so addictive to the point that real life will pale in comparison to the experiences you can have in the metaverse. According to a Gallup poll from January of this year, people in the US, my biggest demographic, rated their quality of life 15% lower than they did at the start of 2020. They also rated the opportunity for a person to get ahead by working hard 12% lower than they did two years ago. With all the things that have been going on in the world these past few years, it's not hard to see how the prospect of spending time in the metaverse could become more and more alluring to people. In fact, according to the Harris Poll, 37% of US adults think the metaverse would be more fun than real life, and 38% believe the metaverse would make their lives better. These numbers are even higher for millennials. 
53% of them agree the metaverse would be more fun than real life, and 51% agree the metaverse would make their lives better. Although it's uncertain how accurately this poll represents the general populace, there's still a concerning amount of people who may fall prey to addiction to the metaverse. And that's not something that should be taken lightly. Zucca, io so cringe, bro. I will be taking my Reddit gold del svere. Listen, I don't know who you are, but get that skinny kid back here now. I can't afford another lawsuit. Whatever. So, what do you think is the most exciting thing that we're working on right now? You know what? Here's the thing, Zuck. I don't disagree with everything you've said. You're right. Screens can't convey the full range of human expression and connection. But neither can any of the stuff you've shown me, if I'm being honest. I think my exposure to the internet has distorted the way I see the world. And I need to use the internet to make more meaningful connections with people. I can be online, but it doesn't have to be terminal. Alright. So, what do you think is the most exciting thing that we're working on right now? Thanks for the discussion, Zuck, but I have to go. I have a life. There's one more thing that I want to tell you about today. I want to talk about the metaverse. Get out of here! If you're concerned about Zuck's plans for the metaverse, then it might be comforting to keep in mind that many people are not on board with Facebook's vision. Ultimately, Zuck's plans will fail if not enough consumers are interested. Furthermore, John Riccatello, CEO of Unity Technologies, has stated, quote, Now for me, the word metaverse is plural. We don't think that one company will represent the metaverse as, say, for example, it was imagined in Ready Player One. We believe there's going to be hundreds of thousands of destinations in the metaverse. If you're concerned about the idea of the metaverse in general, even without the aspect of Zuck's involvement, it might bring you some solace to know that it's been said that the metaverse would have the greatest ongoing computational requirements in human history. And according to what a vice president at Intel said in December 2021, the metaverse would need 1,000 times more computing power than what is currently available. We're still a long way until the metaverse is fully here. And also, the FTC has had their eyes on Zuck for a little while now, so we don't know what will end up happening with that. Who knows what the future will look like? But just be cautious and be aware that with great technology comes great responsibility. I know it's been a while, and I appreciate your patience and support. If you're interested in what went into making this video, I put together a video for my Patreon supporters including deleted scenes, early concept art, alternate thumbnails, and even more behind-the-scenes stuff. Whether you're a viewer just wondering how the sauce is made, or a YouTuber trying to get a special glimpse into the process, you can find this on Patreon. It would also help support me and my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Harder, better, faster, stronger. Uh.